AM 630 KTKK. Summer's fading fast. If you've got a boat or a motorcycle, your days are numbered. I went out on my boat this weekend. I've got an old Corvette in 1980 that I've got here at the station with me, trying to enjoy it before the snow sets in. This is the place every Saturday at 1 o'clock where Utah's culture, history, politics, and religion collide. I tell you everything you never knew you wanted to know. Find it here on KTALK, Utah's oldest continually broadcasting radio station. Yesterday, interesting event on the Hill. Representative from Florida, Mark Foley, resigned. Now, those of you who've listened to this show for the last year or so that I've been on the air know that about every three months we have our secret White House correspondent come on the air. We call him JR, the senior legislative director for a California congressman. And so periodically we check in with him and find out the latest with the upcoming elections, which, with this sudden resignation, with some of the other things going on, I invited him on, and it's always a pleasure to have him. Thanks for being with us. So tell us what's going on. Mark Foley resigned yesterday. Who is he? What do you know, what do you know about him, and how is this going to affect elections in November? Well, he's been a, a uh, pretty solid Republican for the last, uh, how many ever terms? I think five terms he's been in office, and uh, has been one that Republicans, that the leadership could rely on as a, as a trustworthy and, and loyal uh, source uh, for, for sticking with the party. And uh, so, you know, here, here's this guy, Floridian, um, well-liked, a nice guy, um, great staff, very qualified staff uh, from Florida. And... Uh, this just came as a as a huge shocker to everybody. I mean, everyone. AM 6:30 KTKK. We're back. I'm Steve Reinhardt. This is K Talk. I want to just mention again that I was at the fundraiser last night for Mitt Romney. I had a small team of people. We were there trying to raise money. It was a really interesting event. So let me just. Take care. Okay, we've got our call screener going on the calls here. We've got people calling in already who want to talk to Josh. Let me go to him now. Hi to you. I doubt you recognized me, but you <laughs> walked right by our table. <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, thank you so much for coming out and supporting my dad. That's incredibly helpful. Well, I understand you're in Wyoming today at a fundraiser appearing for him there. I am. I'm uh, in, between, uh, in between two events and uh, pulled off on the side of the highway so I could get a good cell reception. <laughs> well, it's really a privilege to have you on. I I support your dad as much as anybody possibly could. I got to see him last night. I actually got to have my picture taken with him. I, if you talk to him, tell him that I was the guy that was scrambling to try to get my picture at the end, and he was nice enough <laughs> to stop what he was doing and take yeah. a minute and let me have that picture, which I've got on the website. I, I had a list here of questions I wanted to ask you about your father's campaign. Sure. And before I do that, let me just express my general admiration for your your father, your campaign, yourself. I had a class with you at BYU. We graduated about the same time. It was, uh, I think it was our which, World which Civilization class. That class. What's okay, that? great. Yeah, that was, a, that was a big class. Well, your father is doing well. He's, he's ahead in the polls in Iowa. He's ahead in New Hampshire. He's ahead in Michigan. But he seems to yeah. be slipping in New Hampshire. Is the campaign getting worried at all, at all about his poll numbers there? You know, not really. Um, no one has ever won in New Hampshire in the you know in history, um, and, and in terms of the primary process. Um, you know, we're expecting poll numbers to go up and down, and uh, and we're expecting a lot to happen over the next few months. But what's encouraging is that the numbers um, where people have gotten to know him and see him, his numbers are always going up, and and uh, people just like what they what what he has to say and, and uh, what he stands for. So we're encouraged that as people get to know him, that his numbers will rise nationally. Um, we're gonna we're still gonna do well in New Hampshire. I mean, uh, of the first uh, seven primary states, my dad is ahead or uh, tied for the lead in five. So I think we're in a great position. Now is he ahead in Wyoming as well? I believe he's ahead in Wyoming. Wyoming, Michigan. Uh, it's every except South Carolina and Florida and, and the early ones, so um, Nevada, Iowa, New Hampshire. 
Okay. And so he's not doing as well in Florida or South Carolina. And why do you think that is? Because I know that he's made yeah, we, numerous visits to those states. He, he's made a lot of visits there. Um, a, a big part of it is those are bigger states, a little, a little more expensive to advertise there. Um, haven't spent the advertising dollars there that they have in the other places. Um, it's just easier to advertise in a, in a place like Iowa, New Hampshire, where it's a relatively small state, and uh, you can get on the air and, and, and help people get to know you. Um, what we're, that's a big part of the reason why we're raising money right now is to be able to start advertising in those two states and uh, get his uh, name ID up and, and help people um, know what he stands for. So, um, you know, we're confident that we can, uh, we can do well in both of those states, and it's just a matter of working over the next three months hard in those places. How did things go last night at the rally? Are you raising the money that you need to this quarter? It ends tomorrow, I guess. You know, I they they don't they don't uh, tell me this kind of stuff in case uh, in case they let it slip on a radio program like this a day early. <laughs> that's that's but, uh, top secret I, I really information. Have, I really have no idea, but uh, I know that we had a ton of people out there making calls, and uh, it was just great to see. And you know, I don't think any of the other campaigns are able to pull off any events like that because they just they don't have the the uh, fan and and support. Of, uh, of people like my dad does, and, and people are just really willing to get out there and, and make calls to friends and family and, and possibly offend a few of them, and, and, but they're willing to go out and do that. So it's, it's really great. Gingrich, Newt Gingrich announced he's not going to get into the race this morning. Is your dad pleased to hear that? Uh, you know, that's the first I'd heard of it. I haven't talked to my dad since I heard that. Um, I think it would have been really hard for Newt to get in the race. Um, I, I think, you know, for anyone that's, you know, um, I mean, you probably see Fred Thompson who's gotten in recently. I think he's you know, it's hard to get a team together and and, uh, and organize, and, uh, and it's particularly in a, in a primary process where these early states and organization is so important. Um, it's going to be hard for people coming into the, into the race late to be able to do that. So um, I, I think Newt, Newt saw that it would be a tough thing for him to do, but I actually hadn't heard that yet. I've, I've been uh, not watching the news this morning, so that's, well, uh, that's good to hear. You, you've been on the road. Yeah, it, was, it came out yeah. about an hour and a half ago. Okay, wow. Let me ask you this, and this is a sensitive subject, but one that a lot of listeners talk about here on the air. Do you believe that part of the reason your father's not doing as well in South Carolina and Florida is because of the evangelicals there and maybe misconceptions they have about Mormonism? Well, you know, I think uh, people around the country are curious about um, the, the faith, and uh, they ask a lot of questions about it. Um, but, I mean, almost everyone that I've talked to has kind of said, hey, you know, I don't necessarily agree with your church, um, but I, I love the fact that your dad is a man of faith, uh, that he is, he's a man of, of values and principles, and uh, that's what's most important to me. Not, you know, not the fact that I you know, disagree with some of, some of his religious beliefs, but that you know, we, we share the same values. And I think you know, that's, that's starting to happen in South Carolina and Florida, and, and uh, originally I think they have some questions about the faith, but you know, I think for the most part people are pretty open-minded and, and uh, willing to accept that you know, we, we have different beliefs but same values and uh, I mean, what, what you're really seeing in this you know 2008 election is that we're going to um, really stand for you know we, we have some cancer really going to stand for American family and family values and, and um, I believe that my dad is you know kind of really he talks about that in, in a lot of his uh, some speeches and, and uh, you know, we're going to have you know some uh, he'll be a stark contrast to some of the other candidates so I think uh, um, you know it's just um, people of all different faiths will, will, will see that in my dad and, and be able to say, hey, um, this is a guy whose values I agree with and I'm going to vote for him. I agree with you. And if, if ever there was a man who can pull off changing some of those misconceptions, I think it is your dad. I think they are out there. Has your dad considered doing something like telling evangelicals that if he's nominated, he'll choose a strong evangelical running mate? Uh, um, or doing you know, something like that to, to alleviate some of those concerns that they have down there? I, I don't think he's uh, talked about that. Not, I mean, at this point, I don't think he's um, even given it, you know, I mean, he's given it some thought, but not real serious thought as to who he picks for running mate. Um, and, I, you know, knowing my dad, I know he, he stands on principle, and, and uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if he'd make a promise like that, but, I mean, what he would promise him is, is uh, that he's going to make um, maintaining America's culture of, of family values and uh, conservative values uh, a priority of his administration. And uh, I think that's something they can all agree on. Is there a chance that he might pick somebody like Jim DeMint in South Carolina? To... Um, you know, I think Jim DeMint's a great guy, and uh, my my dad um, has a lot of respect for him. And uh, but it, at this point, it's just just so early to tell. Um, and and uh, I think you know he's he's leaving that that option open. And and at this point, really just working on you know his own primary and, and making mm -hmm. sure people get to know him. 
Um, but, uh, you know, Jim DeMint's a great guy, and, you know, I, I know he's in the handful of people my dad's talked about in the past that would be a great uh, vice presidential, presidential candidate, but, there, are, you know, there are a number of others as well. A lot of people believe that Jeb Bush secretly behind the scenes is supporting your father's campaign. Do you feel that way? Do you think eventually he'll come out and endorse Mitt? You know, I don't, I don't think Jeb Bush is going to endorse anybody because of the special position he's in with his brother being president. Um, and uh, but I, I mean I will tell you that we have a lot of uh, a lot of Jeb's Florida staff on our team and and uh, they've been incredibly helpful. I was just down on the Panhandle last week and worked with uh, two people who were very senior staff for Jeb Bush. So I have a lot of uh, a lot of Jeb's team. But you know I don't, I don't see Jeb doing anything till after the primary process is over, just because of the special position he's in with his brother. That makes sense. Well, we know you're busy up there and, and attending this fundraiser, but I just want to tell you that. With the limited influence that I have as a talk radio host, I will do everything yeah. I can to try to help the campaign. Oh, I appreciate it. That's great. <laughs> and, and we really wish you the best. We'll Thank look forward you so to hearing, much. hearing how the fundraising turned out for this quarter, I guess probably in a few days. Like, will those figures be announced next week? I, you know, I don't know what they plan. Usually it's uh, four or five days after the quarter ends that they have it all tallied up and figured out. And, and uh, it's always a little harder for us because we do these big events on the, uh, near the end of the quarter. Um, it just takes a little while to uh, tally all those numbers up and, and make sure that everything's legitimate and, and uh, work it out. So um, my guess would be four or five days after the end of the quarter. Good luck to you. Take care thank up there. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking a few minutes with us on the program. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. That was Josh Romney, Mitt Romney's, I believe, oldest son. He was there at the fundraiser, as I mentioned last night. Trevor and I were there uh, helping him raise money. And true to my promise, I want to help the campaign. So I encourage you, our listeners to donate money to his campaign. You can go to his website, www.mittromney.com. You can donate there. Per the election laws, every quarter, the candidates have to announce how much money they've raised uh, during that quarter. This is going to be the most important quarter because people are going to be, have decided how they're going to vote by the end of the year. So it's important. If you're considering making a donation to his campaign, make that before the end of this month. In other words, today or tomorrow. We'll be back in a minute. I'm Steve Reinhart. This is K-Talk, Voice of Utah. Give us a call if you have questions or comments. 254-5855. That's all right. 630 KTKK.